Good morning, everybody. We are at Lake Norfolk in Arkansas. It's the first official day of practice for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I'm going to do a little bit of ledge fishing over to my right, way, way over here. This is Kelly. She's also doing some ledge fishing. She's a little more out of the wind than me, but I like the wind. Caught a smallie, a spot, and a largie yesterday. The wind is blowing, and I apologize for that. But uh, we're going to see what we can come up with. Had some really good follows, some real big fish that just wouldn't, wouldn't bite. So we're going to try a little finesse fishing this morning off this ledge. Now there's a channel bed that runs right past this point. It's the North Fork River channel. And it's an old riverbed. And uh, let's see what we can get. Stand by. Alright, so you can see we have a 5 inch Gary Yamamoto Senko attached to a Eagle Claw Trocar 2.0 2 aught extra wide gap. We're using an Accurus PT this morning. It's a 30. I've got uh, Power Pro Slick 8. 15 pound braid attached to Vicious 100% fluorocarbon 12 pound leader. And uh, see what we can do. Oh, my mistake. And we've got the Tour KVD Signature Series. It's a 7.4 medium. Takes a quarter ounce to an ounce. Uh, line weight 8 to 17. So we're perfect. We're right on the money. This is what I caught all my fish with yesterday. So this is my, my workhorse. And an old standby. Now this ledge drops off real fast and in this wind it's going to be even more hard to control the line so we got about 10 15 mile an hour wind this morning you guys can probably hear that and I apologize again but let's see what we got if you have really windy conditions like this a lot of times if you hold your line close to the water instead of holding it up that wind won't sweep it and make that big bow in the line. So that's one of the things that you do to help alleviate and get a little bit better line control. Also have a couple more tricks I'm going to be using with this. These Senkos are pretty cool. You can fish them a lot of different ways. For a gin clear super clean water like Norfolk, the more natural translucent baits that you have um, I've found work really really well especially when you're ledge fishing but I'm also going to be doing some chatter baits um, be working a few crank baits and this is definitely good conditions for a jerk bait For now, I'm going to stick with what worked for me yesterday. There we go, there's one. Let's see what we got. Nice, nice, nice. What do we have here? Okay. Looks like a little bronze back. Hello, smallmouth. Easy there, easy, easy, easy. Whoa, 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 don't throw that hook. Okay. Beautiful. 
Look at that pretty girl. Kel! Kel! Over here! Over here! Small mouth! About up to my elbow. I'd say she's probably about a pound and a half. And uh, let's get her back in the water. Wow. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. There you go. So that is one of the beautiful things about this lake. There are some amazing, amazing fish in here. There's walleye, there's sauger, there's huge stripers, spot, largemouth. But these smallies, man, they're quickly going to become my fave. Quickly. So Jim Pitt, Steve Carmen, Alan Thacker, that fish was for you boys. And again, pretty much all I'm doing here is I'm just letting this sink go, which has got enough natural weight to it. The way, the way these Yamamoto's are crafted, really ingenious. They've got weight, but they're still pliable. They've got loads and loads of salt. And I'm just letting it roll down this ledge. Now, like I said, this is a ledge. This is a, a good channel swing that comes through here. And the uh, North Fork Riverbed is below, which is probably maybe 70 feet down. Um, the ledge that I'm fishing drops off real fast from, I don't know how much the GoPro can see here. But you've got this natural hard rock, which smallmouth love. They love rock structure. It's like they were born for it. And they cling to that. So as the Cinco drops down this ledge, that's when they're just, it's irresistible to them. They're just biting. So we're gonna, now this thing's pretty trashed. I've got a whole pack of these Cinco's with me today. Um, and I'm probably gonna need every one of them. I got a few different colors, but this, uh, man, this bright orange is, this is money right now. So I thought against pulling out a fresh worm yet. This still has a couple of uses in it, even though I don't know how well you can see that. But you can see where that small mouth chewed that pretty good. But that's where I put my hook in this time. Now when you're gauging where you want this to swim as straight as you can, put your thumb there. Okay, and then when you flip this thing over, you kind of have a guide of where this is going to go in. And the reason you want to do that is you want to keep the bait as straight and natural looking as possible. And you just want to kind of want to expose that. Just stick the very end of that hook in. And you're going to have a little bit of mesh there. 
let me show you what I'm going to do next. So there's a couple of things you can do. This is one of the things that I really like to do and it seems to work pretty well. So normally if I had my hook further up here, I would do this a lot more at the bottom. I'm going to do it on both ends and just see what happens. So I'm going to take my braid scissors and I'm going to cut that in half. Those of you that use worms and tubes all the time can see where this is going. Cut it again. And then I'm going to cut it again. So if you have stick baits or Senkos with you and you don't have any tubes, see how that moves now? Didn't move that way before. I'm going I'm to have some fun and I'm going to do it the same way at the top. So we've got that cut. Now we're going to cut it again. And that is just a real fun way to trick out that worm. And a lot of times, create something that your fish just hasn't seen before. You see how that moves? See how that moves? And when that shimmy's down in the water, it's going to create a little bit more vibration and a little bit more flare. And let's see if we can catch one on that. I don't know if you can see that going in. But oh yeah, that's a good little flare right there. Alright, let's catch a fish. You can pull out if you want to fish through. There's some decent smallies on this ledge. Where's it at? How's it going? 
smallmouth. You know this is my first smallmouth ever pretty much. Yeah, I'd say they're about 15-20 feet right off that ledge in that channel bed. Woo! All right, on the Cinco, another beautiful little smallie. Pretty little guy. Look at that fish, man. I'll take it all day long. All right, go get bigger. Tell your ma. All right, so here's what I'm doing. You guys see that? The very end of this tagline, like I was talking about before, thanks to a real good fisherman by the name of Jim Pitt I make a little granny knot just cinch that down now it does leave a little bit of a tagline I don't mind that so much so then you have something that looks like that all right and you just Take that. Snip that right there. And you're good to go. Now if you want to save the life of a worm, this has been chewed to heck. This was the first worm that the first smallie bit on. Still have these really cool splays here. Almost like a Ned Rig, but it's weightless because that Yamamoto's got quite a bit of weight to it. And we're going to fish this and then we're going to call it good. We got to get back home. <laughs> <laughs>